Hello my people, I don't come again with talk bon gay news. Hey, this one when I hear so I say make a fair carry and come show on a first before I go bring the full details. This video I won't play for now. So now yesterday will be Sunday, then they do one and they say now today they they meet for high court for na high court eh, na court for London. Before I will continue, my people, good morning, my amazing people. Good afternoon, good evening. I greet you all according to your time. I remain your humble girl, Anointed Lady TV. If you are new to this channel, you are highly welcome. And if you have been watching me, you've not subscribed. What are you waiting for, guys? Please kindly hit that red button where they will subscribe and also put on the notification bell so that you will be getting more updates from this channel. Let me get straight to the point, guys, before I will leave Una up to the video. This woman say, in the, he said they hear what they happen, even when they say they want session CNN. Now they don't carry the matter, go court. He said, Queen Elizabeth don't enter the matter. Elizabeth said they want poof though. Somebody come ask when she they do the live video, say, I beg you, one of their friends, one of the eagle say, I beg me, they leave uh, Africa, I beg, then get clash with Africa. Now he replied, they say, even though say they get clash with Nigeria, but he nasty, she nasty Nigeria woman. And as far as I say, Queen Elizabeth don't put man say they're ready to dig this matter to the end. And you can still narrate as in say they take care of many children for Nigeria. Make you watch the video and they come back. Guys, we get serious talk oh. on Monday. On Monday, we are having a uh, this thing in London in the high court. We are talking about the rubbish we don't have for Nigeria. We Nigerians that are in Dysphoria, that are in Dysphoria, in London, in anywhere outside Nigeria, we have come together, we have united, and it is pouring to the high court. Boris Johnson, Boris Johnson, Don De Eram, Mama Charlie, uh, and uh, 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 Mama, Mama Charlie herself, and Charlie, they don't De Eram. I beg you, Buhari, on my plan don't fail. Guy, on a don't dive iron. Rubbish. But I don't dive rock. But I don't chuck nyash for fire where I don't hurt. Idiot. Ah, you, you, you want to say nothing they happen. Maybe your people. Guy, your people don't kill your people. But I don't hear. See the kind of rubbish. Hey. Hey. No worry, Nigeria, we are coming to the rescue. We have fucked up in the past. I am not proud of what the British have done in the past. No. It is our time to make a difference. To put things right. To say we are sorry for what happened before. Ah, uh -uh. Come together and unite Nigeria. They just need a little... We, we need a little formation. A little guidance. A little bit of uh, intelligence for the higher levels. Ah, all these old mumu, they don't sit down where you don't they droop eye. They, 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 they carry stick, they walk out. They go from left to right to go and treat his body. Ah uh ah. -uh. Oh God, sit down, Joe. What's it happen? I know they fail. Me when they come to Niger tire, they come. Oh, and um, if you like carry my body, come put me inside prison. I'm not saint. I am innocent. I will always stand by the people. People have lost their goddamn lives. Praying for Nigeria, carrying the flag of Nigeria. We carry blood of a Nigerian man. Which kind of rubbish? No, they're holding the flag for unity. Ah, I can't say sit down. You need to even talk. Talk. No more talk. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Xenophobia. You know they talk. Koro. You know they talk. Eh, uh, Leki Masika. You know they talk. Oga. Okay. People have died. Ah, uh ah. -uh. I'm very angry. I'm very angry. Now just because, eh, uh, let me buff this shit. Now just because lately, me, I know well. Now the reason why I did the open mouth. It's to say I did well, I for don't talk since. You see they tire me. Uh uh. Ha. Anyway, you are asking why what? Why British they're still putting their eyes in Africa? My dear, why are we putting eyes in Africa? Because we want to help. I believe I believe with my open heart, say it now for better. I don't want belief say na for negative reasons or monetary values or anything like that. We are past those olden days when rubbish they happen. Me, I don't talk, I'm, I'm not proud of it. I'm not. I'm proud of being a Nigerian by my own my, my own mouth. I don't care if I don't carry Pali. I, in my heart, I'm a Nigerian because I live by your 
your better mentality. I use your mentality to guide my life. I use your traditions and your values to, to value my life. And everything I do is because I don't learn I'm from Africa. So I don't know. I, I don't know whether they have better mind or not. But all I know is say, we say, we are not stupid anymore. We know that hassle has happened in the past. It's time to help because why are you still sit down and do nothing? You are making sit down and do nothing. I mean, one day we go to High Court for London and we will just start to see whether we feel even uh, help with just putting policing in place. Uh -uh, it's ridiculous. Nigeria cannot carry on like this. People are dying on a daily. Uh -uh. No, that is not the way it should be at all. Alone. Uh, alone. It's not supposed to be like that. Uh, people should be, uh, there shouldn't be poverty to this level. And, 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 and uh, people were not fit even go to school. No more thing. Me on my own, I have children in Nigeria that I don't even talk about on a regular basis. I do not talk of my children on a regular basis. Why? Because the help I do, I know they do and for somebody to say thank you. Or somebody to say, oh, well done, oh, you're both princess. And no, I do and because my heart's time is said, now which I supposed to I come to Nigeria, I make movies, I do advertising, I do my own comedy, I do whatever. I do, you know, as we, as we, they see small job, I they do, I they hustle. I'm not by any means a celebrity, no, I'm a normal everyday person like you and I, we are the same thing. But the only thing we say, I get, I get small uh, platform if I fit ball and that. But it is just because of you guys. You, you follow me, why? I don't even know. But I appreciate you. But these are my children. I will tell you today because it's important that we remember to help others because that is what the government forgets. Nigeria will never change for our children or anything if we cannot lead by example. It's so important. It is that is the key thing to lead by example. Uh -uh. Just help people now. If now, if okay, you know, if you school anybody, no problem. Just drop small change for picking hands or the mama for the picking. Uh, carry them go buy food or something just help any way you can it's not all about you have to do this and do that and see that one child right the way through to whatever I'm just lucky that the way that I managed to do my own is it gradually just naturally fell into place I used to work for British Airways I will give you a story now if you don't want to listen no wahala but this is the story of how I got really involved in Nigeria I used to work for British Airways and I used to fly enter Abuja and Lagos and it was Lagos that I used to enjoy because Abuja was fine I enjoyed it but the hustle was not as much as Lagos in Lagos I really felt like uh, hey, I did for the center I don't know why they, they change uh, the this thing to Abuja the capital for my mind is actually Lagos forget um, so I used to fly in and I used to disobey the rules they told us that we should stay in our hotel me I not saying though, why am I staying in my hotel? You are telling me that I should stay inside when people are outside selling food and they are trying to hustle to feed a family but you want me to pay inside Transtop Hotel or Oriental or wherever I did. Rubbish. No, I did, I, or double tree, that double tree were different, Keja. Uh -uh. I used to come out. I go come out though, and when I come out, I go just go uh, this thing. Go roads. And I used to see one mama put. That mama puts where I did see old, nah, older lady. And she used to sell a while going. Now the only thing where she did sell with bread. But I used to enjoy it, sha. So whenever I land, if na night time, I go go for the following day. But if na daytime, if na night flight and I enter for morning, I go go for morning before I even sleep. I, just, I go go bath, then I go come out. Anyway, this mama put, I used to see her by the hour going and she get like bench. Everybody used to obviously follow me, talk like, ah, oh, but what are you doing here? And back then, I, I wasn't fluent of pigeon. I just used to hear one or two words and I was trying to pick it up. This is back in 2008. So, I used to sit down there and eat the food. And when I used to sit and eat the food, across the road, there was like a mountain of rubbish, like a tip, a, a general waste tip. And I used to always see these two children every single time I went there. It doesn't matter what day. I would always see these kids, always, two of them, two boys. I was like, ah, they were so young. One was like five, one was like three. I was like, ah, what are they doing? Walking around dirty, looking, ah, so I was just fascinated, Sha. I even asked the mama put that, who are those kids? She was like, mm, 
that the, their mother, she, she knows them, but their mother is not around. Their mother died. The father left years ago, like when the last baby was born. I was like, ah, but she didn't give me any more information. So I was like, okay, no worries. I did work for that airline for like a good four years. So you can imagine now how many times I've only seen these children for, for that place. So eventually they used to wave at me and say, oh, you both. So I would wave back, say hi. And it got to the point where I say to them, are you hungry? The bigger one will say yes. I'll say, come. From across the road, it was not big. You know how Sanajia has been now. I'll say, come, come. They will come sit down beside me with his smaller brother and they will eat. I would even sometimes leave them there eating. I would just pay the lady, let them eat and go. She even said, why am I bothering? But that wasn't my business. As far as I'm paying her, she was fine. So, and they feed these children and I used to wonder, ah, what is going on? What is happening with the kids? I know their names by this point, but due to their own security, I will not give you their names. It's child A and B. So these two children, A and B, I was like, ah, ah, okay. So as I got to know them, I used to say, what are you exactly doing here? They would tell me that they are trying to find things that they can sell. Not the younger one, or the younger one, not two, they talk, but the older one, he was like five, going six. He could tell me what was going on. He told me they get brother for house. Now only, now only we see they tell me because now smoke became. I said, ah, you get brother, where's your mother? He told me the same thing, that his mother don't die. Ah, I said, okay. Where is your brother? Because I think say, okay, make I come meet your brother, make I reason him with him because maybe he's my age or even younger or whatever, but I can discuss with him. Uh, uh, not my age, uh, but younger. So I want to just know what is going on. Maybe if he is like 12 or 14 or at least he will understand. These children were too young to understand much. But the elder one was intelligent though, very intelligent. Child A, very intelligent. B as well, but at that point it was A. So I uh, see right now. So me, I one day I said to him on a very good day, they came and ate and I was like, take me to your brother. So they crossed me across the roads and I walked into one kind of shanty town like that. Me, I didn't even feel, I just carry leg and tie inside. And by now, it's been like three years I've been seeing these kids or so, something like that. So they don't, they're older, small. Uh -uh. So I couldn't uh, enter this like uh, shanty town with them and I can't see one small Peking. This became not past how many, how many years, Seth? Now, now, very small child. I said, now your brother be this? They say, yes. Uh -uh. So now, the older one is actually fending for his younger two brothers and the older one was only five at that time when I found them. So by this point now, six, seven, he was probably like going eight, the younger one was uh, going six and then the baby is now going three because it was like six months old at that time. I said, no, I can't leave them like this. I used to carry things out for them. I used to take clothes. Whenever I go there, I would give the elder one small change, make him manage them. But now five-year-old Peking, where they talk to five-year-old Peking. So I know if he just dash them like 20K and say, oh yeah, manage them. What will a baby do with that? So anyway, by now, this older boy is seven. Then I have the younger one, uh, six, five. Then I have the baby of three. One day came and I just went into that town, shanty town. One mama come greet me, say, what are they do for her? She never see me. I said, ah, ah, how you just say you never see me? Me, I don't see you. How you never see me? She said, what am I doing? I said, I want to carry these children out. Who do I need to talk to? So I forget that this child forget. She even dismissed them like they are nothing. They are a, pro they're a headache. That their mother is dead. That their father hasn't come back. That they are, uh, I said, who they feed them? They, she know they talk. She just say, if person is dead, they go feed them. If they're not dead, they don't go feed them. Kilo day. Which kind of lifestyle is this? I just did one dash out. Anyway, the follow and talk, follow and talk, follow and talk. Finally, this uh, woman agreed that I should meet the uh, Bala. Is it Bala? Bala? Bale? Bale? Of the area. I said, okay. That was like the, the head guy. I don't even know what I'm talking about because I know to know names, but I'm sure it was something like the Bale or something. This guy now came to meet me and he was very serious. So by now I understood pigeon. I'd been I'd been coming to Nigeria for, for some years and my pigeon was getting good. I'd been learning it by myself. Nobody taught me or these kids and I, I managed a little bit of somebody back here at home that I, I was uh, dating at that time. He was a Nigerian guy. Unfortunately, God bless his soul, Ezon Daniel. He died um, 
is it not even three weeks ago now god rest in, may his soul rest in peace and pains and pains but anyway uh these children were my priority so i spoke to the guy he said make i give him what did he say at the time he said make i give him fifty thousand or something and i can carry them go anywhere where i like uh, i said i easy shake it like that i go uh, anyway the reason that i said i'm not gonna give you fifty thousand these children are worth more than that but i know we'll give you because i want to do better for them i can use that money to do for them after small arguments in english show i can't change them i say oh god cool down now you see that what do you want to do for this beginning what put up for us what do you want to i can't vex he tell me say ah sure ah now you body uh speak pitch like this now story story you don't get banter finally the guy agrees say make i just give him small holding money I say I, I wait to be holding money. He say make I give him five 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 k for each of the picking. I look at send a fifteen thousand. Will it be fifteen thousand? Oh yeah, I can't give him the fifteen k, and I can't carry the children. I call for Okada. The Okada come. I just because I asked the Okada how can I find the taxi. The guy say ah you could just look for roads now. Nah? I say okay no problem. He they try help me flag down car car don't stop i don't even know whether the car had a better car or anything i carry that car go in my hotel because at least the younger baby was too young to be walk out up and down the road they had one or two things for the house so i just packed them and go i took them to my hotel i was there with them in the hotel just for two nights and i didn't know what the hell to do i've taken these children from their home but they don't have anything so the only thing i can do is better I had a very good friend in Nigeria called Gift. We were like five and six. Ah, Gift, God rest her soul. Now another one of my people were don't die. Of. I don't know why God has always led me to wonderful people, but they have died and left me young. Maybe because as God always, only the good die young in our, in our country. That's what we say. It's the good people that die at a young age. So I just take that one to heart, say yeah, hey, I know she'd be a good woman. And Ezra as well, he was a good man. So between the two of them, I'm very okay knowing that I've met them and I was happy and you know I was blessed to have them in my life. So anyway, I uh, called my friend Gift and I said, Madam, I beg, can you get to the hotel? She came. I paid for that very expensive hotel. I paid like 40,000 a night for four nights because I knew when the fourth night I'll be back there again and I will have that night for free. So because I was working. So when I, I flew back to London, then it, uh, three days later, I flew back out to Nigeria. So on the fourth day, I was there. That fourth day, me and Gift carried the three children to uh, another hotel that was like 8,000 a night or something. And I sat down, spoke to the management, said they are my family, that, um, you know, we are, we are a family unit. You don't need to know who is mother, who is whatever. We are a family, me, Gift, and the three children. I need a family room. What can you do for one month? So I agreed to deal with the guy for a whole month. He know say that you don't rent your room for one month. So he did me discount. And gift and those three children stayed there for that one month alone. We tell they tell you now that's true story or this one no be story. I know say I feel give you story, but this one no be story. So then we uh, gift and the three children were there for one month and that gave me headspace to now look together with gift and say, okay, what can we do? All we are doing at this point is feeding these kids every day. I will leave gift with small money where she could just manage. She had clothes for the kids. I will come to London. I will go to Primark. I will buy them clothes. They didn't suffer for anything, clothes or food, no. But education was my next thing. By now, the older one is already, like I said, seven, eight. Then we have a five, six-year-old and a three, four-year-old. So at that point, I was desperate to try and get them into school, especially the elder one. He, he was learning small with gift at home, but in, in the hotel, but not, it wasn't ideal. Anyway, by now I, I had acquainted myself a little better with some people and obviously gift that carried me around up and down. I don't just start to they meet uh, new friends, make new acquaintances, one, one kind like that. And finally I managed to rent a small flat. Nothing better or oh, now one small place like that. So I enter this small cabin where I feel cold out because I beg the house not be in a very tiny place. Now one big living space, you get, I get two double mattresses where we put for grounds. We get a small kitchen and a small bathroom, that's it. It was just like one, one open, one open this thing, like a studio flat or what's in what So anyway, I left gift there with those children now for another one year. 
and we put those kids in school it wasn't up to two months that those kids then were in school all three of them today that eldest kid do the maths now the eldest one is what going to 20 my, my head can only even calculate but it's 2008 9 10 so in 2010 he was seven so 2017 he was 27 18 19 20 27 28 29 30 okay no 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 i'm wrong but anyway my maths is shit but he, he must be he, he's in his 20s he's like 20 something now the eldest he has been through school and finished he is going for uh he is he's done his uh higher education and he's going for nyc 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 and what do you they call him again ah, oh i don't know why my head is scattered today because i did try rush tell you the story but that is what started me in Nigeria and today I have 14, one for 14 children that are in my care, that I look after, I sponsor, I give them food, I pay for the health help. Gift left us two years ago. She departed this land, she unfortunately passed away from a heart defect. She just died on the spot and it left everybody broken. But I gradually managed to move them out from that one place, we moved to another house. In the other house we then had another child that joined us that we met in that area and as we moved and moved into bigger places now so we did add children to our little family that we have today we are a family of 14 children then there is myself i see myself as a mother and i have uh two nannies one health help who does all the cooking and shopping and two guys that do security and driving they do them together so they, they will work together whoever wants to do whatever but they work in a team so in my mind i have done my own small thing and people will ask me why do you always come back to nigeria i have family in nigeria i have my children there okay biologically they are not mine who sent biological rubbish anybody can open leg open the door can they can they bump picking any man can enter a woman give them belly and if you walk out, walk out, and the woman feel bumpy bikini, she not go look after her, or she go just leave her for road. These things they happen. I didn't see them. Now the reason why I get children in my care, because people have left them behind. Okay, the first three is unhelpable because the mother died. But what of the rest? I've met some of them where their family is still there, but because of one, one self, one self, he leg, he don't join together, the finger, the, the toe, they don't join. And because of that, his family's in anguish. They throw him out. One of my children and now he's one of the best swimmers in my in my family as in the children that i have maybe because in leg down they don't web and he can swim very fast but what's wrong with that a child is a child i don't care one of my children self is albino what and what that one uh -uh. In, in, is there any different no everybody is breathing they have a heartbeat we all have red blood we are all human it doesn't matter it doesn't matter and if i give you facts now the, the darkest and the lightest human being in this world are both black. Do you know that? The darkest human being is a black person, obviously. And the lightest human being is actually an albino that is very, very fair. Fairer than fair. So, that, that says something. Africa is great and we must embrace it. And we must carry the children forward and do whatever we can. And because of all these children, I've had a marriage that has broken down. Not because of the children, but in the process of everything. I've got my own marriage that broke down for our own personal reasons and I don't have my own children for again personal reasons but it's not that I don't want but let's look at it now if I had born maybe two children back in let's say 2010 when I was with my ex-husband would I have ever managed to have children off the streets today would I have had 14 kids off the streets today no and I pray said that 14 go turn to 1040 and 14 then from that 1014 to 14,000 then from 14,000 to 14 million ah I, I pray I pray that we feel just lead by example even if it's not in my generation I hope that these children will carry the mindset of giving and remember where they came from remember that they were given an advantage that they too can share to others in the future so you know I just anyway I just to give you the, the gist I don't know why uh, we came to that self but now, now my reasons for loving Nigeria, for coming back to Nigeria, for trying to adapt the culture, for accepting everybody for who they are and really opening my eyes to life. And do not always think negative of another man beside you. Don't look down on anybody. The only time you should look down on somebody is when you are holding their hand to pull them up. 
don't look down and just stand above them no we do not rise by doing that we rise by rising others that is life i wish that if you read your comments i wish but that one go there illegal because i did drive but uh i just wanted to do the live to one remind you about monday that we are having a discussion in london about the situation in nigeria and that it hasn't been forgotten that th these things will these guys that killed innocent people are left in Africa. they will come forward we will finally find out their names we will find out who put them in that position we will also try and see what we can do i wish i was the governor i wish that it was me with mouth entering that parliament office. But I know fits. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Good day, my brothers and sisters, my mommies and my daddies. Is your sister again, your doctor, your friend, your girl, admitted Lady TV? Please, if today is your first time of coming across my YouTube channel, please do subscribe for me. Subscribe and turn on the notification bell. So each time I upload any video or each time I'm on live on YouTube, you will be notified. Thank you very much for always being there for me. Please do subscribe for me. And as you do so, God will richly bless you and meet your heart desire. Thank you very much. I love you all.